Hello 9A, let's try this again. Uh, hopefully this video is coming through with audio today. Let me just get to my Year 9 page. One moment please. So yesterday I set a new task, uh, your assessment task, which is based on the practice assessment you did last week. So if we look at yesterday's post, don't watch that video, it is a dud. You've got these two attachments here. You've got your analysis and you've got your rubric. Now the things I would have told you yesterday are that your rubric is the same as the one you used last week and it is really important that you're aiming for this level here. Now if you hit this level, if you hit the 9 level, this one here, it's assumed that you've done everything in the lower levels as well. Okay, So if you do these things or if you achieve this level you've also done this and done this okay uh, now some people have already finished this task and I've messaged you back and I've said you've got time this week to make your own judgments of your work against this rubric and make sure that your work is up to scratch make sure it's at least up to this year 9 level uh, and ideally you'll be pushing into this year 10 level as well Okay, the other thing I did yesterday was I went through this document. I will give it a quick read for you today. And the questions, I won't go through. The questions are identical to the questions from last week. Okay, now take special notice of this one here. There are no questions that directly reference the audience. You have to find the spaces to include that information. And if you don't, um, I can't really punch your mark over to this level because all of these talk about uh, the audience at different levels uh, and the intended effect on the audience and the intended audience and all of those sorts of things. So you need to find within these questions the best place to put those responses. Okay, so I'll give this one a quick read for you. I'll post this video. You're working on this task this week, so that's all you have to do. If you've got it finished nice and early, don't send it to me today. Okay, send it to me later in the week. Make sure you have looked thoroughly at that rubric you know mark your own work um, and make sure that you're you're punching at the appropriate level so the following editorial was published by sorry in an australian newspaper and presents a point of view on palm oil the not so good oil by stephen andrews sorry steph andrews over the course of history humanity has used natural resources for food clothing shelter in other words to survive there has always been an impact on the environment, but we have generally been able to manage that, that impact. Replanting forests, allowing fields to rest after harvest, protecting areas of the ocean to enable fish populations to recover. However, the growth in the production of palm oil in recent decades is almost unprecedented. So is the related destruction of rainforests in the world's tropics. In Indonesia alone, over 11 million hectares are now devoted to palm oil plantations. In Malaysia, the figure is over 5 million, and in both cases, the area is rapidly increasing. Burning and cutting down trees releases vast quantities of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. The parched earth that results actually absorbs more of the sun's heat, increasing global warming. The areas of forest being converted to palm oil plantations are some of the world's most biodiverse. Loss of habitat has a devastating impact on many forms of rare and endangered wildlife, including orangutans. Can palm oil be produced sustainably? We think not. The RSPO trademark, created in 2011 by the Roundtable for Sustainable Palm Oil, has had very little helpful impact, except, perhaps, to enable the big companies to continue with business as usual, while looking like responsible managers. University of Queensland researchers studied certified and non-certified plantations in Indonesia, Indonesian Borneo and found no significant evidence to suggest RSPO was better compared to non-certified plantations. In other words, placing a label on products doesn't guarantee that the environment is any better off. Where do we go from here? Decreasing the demand for palm oil is surely the only way to slow down the rampant growth in the production of palm oil and the destruction of natural environments. These processes cannot be allowed to continue. We recommend a ban on the use of palm oil in commercial products sold in Australia and strong international lobby lobbying for other wealthy countries to follow our lead. So I've got a quote here, sorry, a caption on the picture. Rainforest in Borneo, Malaysia, being cleared 
for an oil palm plantation. Okay, so you've got your questions here to answer. Um, if you haven't heard of palm oil before, uh, it's a product that is used um, to help make heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps of other products. Now, I don't know that we eat a lot of palm oil, although I stand to be corrected on that one. I believe palm oil is used a lot in things like shampoos, um, cosmetics, and those sorts of things. I'll probably actually find this out for you very quickly. What uh, is palm oil? oil used for but basically it's a really really high demand product that the whole world wants to use but the process of making it farming it etc is just absolutely devastating for environments so here we go palm oil is used for uh preventing vitamin a deficiency cancer prone disease aging oh so it looks like people probably do eat it it is also used to treat malaria high blood pressure cholesterol dementia and cyanide poisoning palm oil is used for weight loss and for increasing the body's metabolism as food, palm oil is used for frying. Hmm, interesting. Let's have a look at this picture here, see if it tells us anything useful. So this is uh, a little image that sort of shows uh, how devastating the process of making palm oil is. Uh, what's this one here? What is palm oil used for? Lipstick, so it is cosmetics. It's using pizza dough, noodles, shampoo, chocolate, marge, detergent, ice cream, cookies, diesel, wow, soap, packaged bread. So it's food and uh, cosmetics and uh, other things like that, detergent, cleaning. So it looks like it's a bit of a, you know, a really good product uh, or a really usable product. That's probably why there's such a high demand for it. Um, but as this article argues, uh, the cost on the environment might be uh, mightn't be worth the trouble of, of making it. All right, so you got the questions to answer here. You've got the rubric to use to make sure your work is A1, brilliant, fantastic, perfect, and you've got the week to get this task done. Once again, I apologize for no audio yesterday. I hope there is audio on this, otherwise I've just wasted seven minutes of my life making a video without audio again, which uh, is not good for anyone. So learning intentions, success criteria, they remain the same as yesterday. I'll just post this video. You can have a little geezer. Uh, I'm online, so send me any questions that you need to. And I uh, really look forward to seeing you all next week. Thanks, guys.